system itself. That is the chief electoral officer in Saskatchewan, Michael Boda, talking about how elections Saskatchewan has been counting the ballots. Scott Moe says he believes that we deserve the respect to have our vote counted by hand. Alberta banned electronic vote tabulators this year. Vote counting has become political. Alexander Essex has been researching voting systems. He's an associate professor of software engineering at Western University, and he joins us on the line this morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. What do you think of the initial decision by the Saskatchewan government to say no to automate, automated machines counting our votes? Well, I think it's certainly their right uh, to do so, uh, but I would like the legislature and you know the people of Saskatchewan to know that uh, vote counting tabulators are used uh, quite widely throughout Canada and the US uh, and there is mechanisms that we can uh, put in place to address some of the concerns that people have about the transparency. What are the concerns? What's your understanding of the big concerns here about these vote tabulators? Well um, when you count ballots by hand uh, scrutineers can watch the process. Uh, I've been a poll worker in uh, my province in Ontario and federally and elsewhere. Um, and so having those scrutineers being able to see the counting, I think is an important um, an, an important part of the process. In fact, it's an international democratic commitment that we have to other democratic nations that vote counting be a transparent process. Uh, the UN says that it should be independent, uh, rather the scrutiny of it, there should be independent scrutiny. So, um, I think that whatever we do do, uh, we just have to live up to those um, principles. And fortunately, in the case of tabulators, there are ways to do that. What are they? Um, so instead, uh, so ultimately it comes down to uh, the, the essential piece of the puzzle here is that there is a paper ballot. Um, these tabulators are ultimately computers and the computers run software. Um, there are checks and balances to ensure that uh, it's running the right software, the software is correct. Um, there's testing that goes on uh, of the machines on election morning. Um, but that is more convincing, I think, to uh, election management bodies um, if we want to provide that assurance to the actual candidates and the voters at large. Um, there needs to be a process that involves looking at the paper ballots. Now, in the case of a judicial recount, uh, there is a process where you can go and look at the ballots. But what we need is a um, a mandatory, what they call a post-election audit. So there are ways to assure ourselves that the paper actually reflects what the tabulators say without counting up the entire thing in a full recount. Um, for example, post-election risk limiting audits. Uh, this is what they do widely in the US. Uh, so we can deploy some of these mechanisms and these processes and that you know, will address uh, the issue of uh, transparency and tabulators really. Why do you think that people have become so concerned about the potential for voting fraud? Um, I mean, I'm a computer scientist, not a political scientist. So I think that um, I have, I suspect that there are political um, motivations here. But um, I think one thing that we can say objectively is that whether or not they're uh, calling for this for the right reason, um, transparency and vote counting is something that is a you know long-standing commitment that we have, that Canada has to our other colleagues, our other nations, uh, democratic nations, to uh, provide uh, transparency. Uh, when Election Saskatchewan did a test of this, they they used machines and then hand counted and turned out exactly the same. Um, why why do you think that? that sometimes politicians say that it's more respectful, we deserve the respect of having it counted by hand? Um, well, so uh, the fact that they did a test and it worked out, I think is fantastic. And I, I expect that to be the case uh, in essentially all cases, but you know, there are situations where that might not uh, happen. Um, I think these are lower probability, but even if it was always coming out the same, um, there is still a duty that we have uh, to candidates and to the public at large uh, for the process to be transparent and independent observation to be available. Um, if you have ever voted on one of these tabulators, as I have in Ontario, 
um, your vote goes into the machine and at the end of the night, it prints out a grocery store style receipt that just tells you who won. I think that's entirely fine for election night reporting, but um, I think that we do need to have some way to go back to the actual paper that voters marked and cast to assure ourselves that the machines did what they said they did. Is that what happens in Ontario after the fact, if there's any concern or need for a recount? Uh, Elections Ontario does not do post-election audits. Uh, they have their own internal mechanisms, and of course there is mechanisms for judicial recounts. Uh, unfortunately, if you're a candidate who has concerns about the counting, uh, and you believe those concerns are in the paper record, um, and you want a recount to uh, demonstrate that, um, the only way to, in many cases, to get that is to uh, look at the paper, which you're not allowed to do unless you can get a recount. So there's a bit of a chicken and the egg on the verifiability side with that. And that is why uh, we need to have routine post-election audits and the laws to enable them. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I appreciate your insight on this. Thank you. My pleasure. That is Alexander X. Essex, an associate professor of software engineering at Western University. What do you think about this? Uh, would you be okay with vote counting machines?